What's up guys? So today we're back with another video of behind the scenes, but in this one I'm going to roll the behind the scenes video and then tell you what equipment I'm using in my settings and just maybe a little bit of my thought process. I just remember starting out in photography and not knowing what lenses to use or how much equipment I needed. You know, I thought it would be helpful to do a behind the scenes with the equipment I use in my predominant settings. So for this wedding, <laughs> this is a beautiful wedding down at Agape Oaks in Beaufort, South Carolina. Um, one of the decisions that I made was the night before and I'm so glad I did. I left my equipment in the car. Now I never do this for theft reasons, but this time it was necessary to make sure the lenses and cameras didn't fog up. So the car was fogging up, getting down there to the hotel, everything. and. I just, you know, I made that decision and I'm glad I did. And let me explain. I actually ended up having to dedicate one camera for the inside and one for the outside um, during the morning portion of this wedding because I went inside with one of my cameras and I came back, I was inside maybe five minutes. I came back outside, it was so muggy, the camera, the lenses, it fogged up. So, you know, people, <laughs> People have a problem when you have a lot of equipment, you don't need that much. And I used to be one of those people, I used to, I couldn't stand the gear snobs as I call them. But now I'm of the opinion, I mean, we, I usually carry one, two, three, four, four to five cameras on every wedding now for me and my assistant or second shooter. And you never really know what could happen. So anyway, once the morning passed, the issue subsided and we were able to use all the equipment everywhere. Um, but, but of course, by that time we were outside the rest of the day anyway. So I'm going to just start in on the dress shot and then we're going to go from there. Um, I was going to do the full wedding, but I realized I can't find any footage of the reception and the exit. I don't know where it went, but <laughs> here's the video guys. So for this dress shot, you'll see that I am using the 35 millimeter 1.8 S. I love this lens and I've got my step ladder so I can get more of a straight on shot. Um, I think it's important to do that when you're, you know, doing, dealing with architecture and the dress I hung, of course, in the, in the door. And I also got shots of it from the other side, like inside as well. Um, just to get more of that detail, but I thought, wow, this is such a beautiful way to highlight this dress in this beautiful place. Um, I'm at 1.8, 200th of a second, ISO 50 for this shot. I took maybe one or two pictures and then I was done, went inside, turned the dress around and got some from the inside as well to get more detail out of that dress because it's so beautiful. I edited these with Mastin Labs, Kodak Everyday Pack um, Gold. It is my favorite editing which is my favorite presets for the flat lays um which i did not know that was a term until i shot another wedding photographer's wedding a couple weeks ago i just call them the details but for the flat lays <laughs> i am using my bessie bakes backdrop which um i love these backdrops uh they are it i got the soft and pliable one so i just transport it um on the cardboard that it came in but anyway um, I used the Nikon Z6 II, the 35 millimeter 1.8S, and I went to ISO 100, and I was at 400th of a second. Um, and of course, I was at uh, 1.8. I used that backdrop, and then I put the veil and then the shoes because I thought that was such a pretty um, shot by itself. But then, of course, I changed and you know put the wedding invitation and all that kind of stuff on there. And I use the same settings for that. One of the things I like to do with the flat lays is I like to do like one big spread of everything, like all the details. And then I might pick apart and do some of the more uh, smaller details. Of course, I'm going to get the ring shot by itself. Um, or maybe, you know, with the garter, or, you know, just some of the other details, but zoom in on that uh, specifically. So for the ring shot, I also use the Z6 II. I use the new macro, the 105 millimeter uh, 2.8 S. Oh my gosh, this lens is amazing. Um, I stopped down to F5.6 to get a little bit more in focus, went up to ISO 800 and stayed at 400th of a second for the ring shots. Now, for the bride dressing shots, um, I did use the Z6 II. I used the 50 millimeter 1.8 S, uh, which is a fantastic lens. 
I was at f1.8, 200th of a second, and ISO 640 predominantly for these shots. I did have my flash on. I had it pointed to the ceiling. Um, it was being real spotty. I think I ended up turning it off. So as you'll see, most of these shots didn't use flash at all. One of the things that I wanted to mention about the dressing shots is I like to educate my brides and let them know to have an area clean. I used to do that a lot in the past, but what I found is they don't really think about it that day. Um, and of course you really wouldn't want to have to put more stress on someone. Um, so I've also said, okay, well, you know, find a designated bridesmaid that will keep things clean. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So what I've found is I like to find a spot that is near the bride, um, that I can have cleaned up. I can clean it myself or, you know, have the bridesmaids scurry and clean up this particular place. Um, there was, a mother and a grandmother and they had their baby they were feeding and changing and they had a lot of baby stuff around and I just asked them nicely if they would mind moving that stuff and they're like yeah of course and so we had this beautiful like hallway by itself where I could do all of the dressing shots for the bride and I love that type of where I don't have to work around a mess um, I can do it but it can be difficult sometimes. Um, for the preformals, I use the Z5. I use the 85 millimeter 1.8 S, which I love. I used, um, I was at 1.8, five thousandth of a second outside, even in the shade, and we were at ISO 640. I have found that even with large group shots, the 85 millimeter is my favorite for those. Um, and I do like to shoot wide open or close to it. Now, of course, if we've got two lines of people, then we're going to have to uh, stop down just a little bit so we can get more in focus, more people in focus. Now, for the ceremony, of course, the settings were going to vary due to, number one, the light changing and also the direction that I'm shooting in with it being such uh, deep shadows and stark uh, contrast with the, you know, the time of day that I'm shooting with the natural light. I generally do not like to use flash and I need to explain that because, you know, a lot of people don't understand why I wouldn't want to soften those shadows. So basically I do like to shoot through things. Now, anyone knows if you shoot through something and you have a flash on your camera, then it is going to make what is around, um, that you're shooting through really, really bright. It's not pretty. It's not flattering. Second of all, if I'm shooting a ceremony and there are people that are kind of in front of where the bride and groom are, which is the case at every wedding, if you use on-camera flash, then just like uh, the stuff that might be around the lens, these people that are going to be closest are going to be highlight. They're going to be bright. Um, it's going to be strange looking. You know, we could do off-camera flash, I guess, if we wanted to and have it to certain sides. Um, that would require a lot of uh, pre-production as far as getting everything all set up and then making sure, of course, that we're not, you know, being a distraction for the wedding. So for me, the ceremony is one of the most important parts of the day. And what I aim to do is to be the least, least obtrusive as I can and also get beautiful shots. So what I like to do is I'll go from one side to the other because generally I can find a spot where I can find light on someone's face that's even, or I can find light that's coming from behind, if that makes any sense. I can move myself to where I can get great shots of each person individually. Now down the aisle, of course, there might be a dark spot on one person's face and bright on the other. And that's okay with me. And that's in my portfolio. So people know what they're getting when they, you know, hire me. So I just wanted to explain that a little bit, why I don't use on-camera flash and why I really don't use off-camera flash either. Um, another thing to note about this wedding, which I do not understand the videographer had two tripods set up. Okay, that's fine. Um, but one of the tripods had nothing on it. <laughs> so I and my assistant had to navigate around that, um, which was perturbing because I really wanted to do like a really wide shot of this whole thing. And there were tripods like everywhere. So because if you had them on one side, then you have it on the other side, it's you, 
you know, you're very limited, especially how close it was. So that's one of the things I was not able to get um, that I generally would have gotten. Now you say, well, why don't you just Photoshop the tripod out? The positions of these tripods and the angles I would have had to take the picture, they would have been in line with people, not like grass. So uh, that's just my thought process on that. So when I was shooting down the aisle towards the house, so everybody's walking up the aisle, um, I'm shooting with the Nikon Z62 of the 70 to 200 S, which is amazing. I love it. I'm shooting at ISO 200 f 2.8 wide open for that lens and 3200th of a second. Now, if I'm shooting from the left side, if we were looking down the aisle from the back, shooting from the left side, I was at ISO 160 f 2.8 and 3200th of a second. So I would be shooting the groom's face and the groomsman from that angle. Now shooting from the right side, I'm at ISO 320, f2.8, and 3200th of a second. So I basically was just changing my ISO up and down to accommodate um, where I was at. And if I was shooting from the back, I was at ISO 320, f2.8, 3200th of a second. Generally, when they are leaving and they are being introduced, so they're walking down the aisle right after the wedding, um, I am crouched down getting that up shot. And my second shooter is on a tripod using the 200 to 500 shooting straight on uh, to the face. Now for the formals after the wedding, I am using the Nikon Z62. I'm also using the 85 millimeter 1.8 S. I'm at ISO 500, 3200th of a second, and I'm predominantly at F 2.2 for these. I have used the 35 and the 50 to take the formal photos in some situations where, you know, I pretty much had to, but I prefer to use the 85 and step back really, really far uh, for the larger group shots, which it doesn't bother me. One of the things with the group shots is, you know, of course, you want to make sure that everybody's hair looks good. It's not awkward, like one piece coming out, you know, in front of their shoulder and one piece not in a kind of weird way. Make sure necklaces are straight. Make sure the bouquets are below the bust area. Make sure everybody is posed correctly. Um, it's the most flattering, but you know, you have to also work really fast and efficiently. So I pretty much have it down exactly what I'm going to tell them to do, um, for the actual formal shots. And then of course, while they are still in that same setup, that same grouping, then I can go into, Oh, let's do something fun. Let's do this, you know, hold your bouquets up or booty dance or whatever. So for the formals of the bride and groom together, I am also using the Nikon Z62 and the 85 millimeter. Uh, for the ones here at this tree where we also had the family and bridal party formals, uh, my settings vary just a bit. I stayed at f2.2 and 3200th of a second. My ISO varied. I on one side, if I'm, you know, trying to shoot him, I'm, or his bias, I'm at like ISO 400. When I'm trying to shoot her bias, I'm like ISO 800. So as I'm moving around them, I'm changing my settings. And generally that's what I do is I'll get my couples into a pose and then I will rotate to get you know, the, the straight on shot, uh, his bias, her bias, etc. So I can get variety for my clients or I might move in close to their hands. Um, now, after we moved from this spot, because there was a lot of people milling around in the background, and if we had changed the other side, there was cars in the background. So we actually decided to walk down the road. So once we get on the road, it is a little bit darker there. There's more trees, more shade. And depending on the direction I'm shooting, of course, my ISO is going to vary. But I stayed at f2.2, 3200th of a second. Um, my ISO went up to 1250, which is not a problem for me because these, the Z62 is going to, the ISO can go really, really high and not get grain. Now, of course, I would have had a little bit higher dynamic range if I had had my, my ISO lowered and I had uh, shifted my shutter speed um, instead. So anyway, I am aware of that, guys. But I just wanted to, um, you know, sometimes these things get kind of fast paced. And so that's one of the reasons why I stick with the ISO and not the shutter speed. Um, I don't want to be changing, especially right before the reception, where I might have a shutter speed too slow. 
Uh, so that's just something that I do for a fail save for myself. <laughs> At 3200th is a bit excessive, I understand. So then we go into the reception. I don't have any behind the scenes footage of this, but I can show you some of the pictures. I used the Nikon Z62, the 70 to 200 S. Um, for when they were entering. So for the people, uh, ISO 400, F2.8, 400th of a second. I had the flash pointing to the ceiling. Now, when it came to the details of the reception, I used the Z5 with the 35 millimeter 1.8 S. I was at 2.8, 250th of a second and ISO 200 for some of them. And for others of them, I used the Z62 because this was actually after. Um, so it was right after the ceremony and I just ran while they were getting, um, you're, you know, redoing makeup, whatever. I had like five minutes to run over to the reception area and get a couple more shots. So I used the Z62. I had the 85 millimeter on my camera. So I just used what I had. Um, I shot at f2.2, ISO 640, and 3200th of a second for those. Now for the exit, um, I used the Nikon Z62, the 70 to 200 S, f, I was at f3.2. Um, I wanted to stop down just a little bit. I didn't know how fast they were going to tear out of. <laughs> um, I wanted to make sure I definitely got that shot uh, as they're coming down. And then, of course, um, as they are leaving in the car. So I used F3.2, ISO 150 for the actual exit, ribbon exit line, and then 800th of a second shutter speed to make sure that, you know, we didn't get any motion blur. So anyway, guys, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you learned something, please subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And I will see you guys next time.